a couple days ago, but this is the first Sunday of 2021. It is a brand new year and we are excited. I hope you are. I hope you had a safe uh, and happy new year. Maybe you got to spend some time with your family. Some people, they have big meals and things like that. And so hopefully you had a good time for New Year's. Did you stay up all night? I can guarantee you Brother Tony probably didn't because I'm old and I go to sleep. Uh, so. Um, Except for when I'm with the teenagers and our pizza doesn't come till 1 in the morning. But that's a different story. We're excited about New Year's here in Junior Church. Uh, we have some new stuff planned throughout the year. We're looking to have some new teachers uh, and different things like that uh, coming in. Uh, we're looking at the new Will of Misfortune, everybody's favorite sketch. And here's my favorite new part. You ready? Brother Matt is here on time. Everybody give him a hand. He's here, but he's still acting weird. Brother Matt, what are you doing? Why are you facing the opposite direction of everybody else? <laughs> oh, he's got something, huh? I got something for you all. Well, what do you got? Remember, you guys, you guys remember 2020? I, unfortunately, yeah. Do you, I know it was last year, but do, do you remember... Worst year I've ever lived. Do you remember what we, what we did at the end of the last junior church of 2020? We, did, we put together a time capsule. I know it was so long ago. Try to remember. It's, it was last week. I got the time capsule! <laughs> what, what do you want to do with the time capsule, brother? Man? We are going to open the time capsule! What? No! Oh. Not open. Look, look, it says do not open until ever. Do not ever open. Oh. 2020 is over. You we, meant like that. Yeah. Don't open that. Don't open that. We 2020 is behind <laughs> us. We only remember it because we have to, because it's ingrained in our brain. We don't want to bring back any of those. We're, we're talking about new stuff, Brother Matt. Yeah, okay. For instance, here's a new thing we're going to start right now. Right now, we're going to start on Junior Church. We're going to start something new right now. We are going to introduce a new puppet <gasps> friend. You know Carl. You know Frankie. You've met some of those folks along the way. We're going to introduce a new segment with a doctor. Oh, we are getting highbrow here in Junior Church. We're getting ready to have a segment from our friend, Dr. Craig Foreman. How much does he charge? Uh, more than he should. Um, <laughs> and he worked for free. So, but we're going to do a new segment. It's going to be Did You Know with Dr. Craig Foreman. He is the foremost expert on pretty much everything, and he's going to let us know about that. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to enjoy Did You Know with Dr. Craig Foreman. You guys ready for it? And we're going to start Junior Church right now. Right now. Hello and welcome to Did You Know? Did you know I am Dr. Greg Foreman? <laughs> well, did you? Mm -hmm. Well, that was just a little doctor humor for you. <laughs> did you know some people are allergic to cats, but some cats are allergic to people? <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> Did you know that sea otters hold hands while they sleep? It's adorable. Cuddle party! Did you know that in Christ we are new creatures, brand new creation in Jesus Christ? Right. Hey everybody, welcome to Junior Church Song Time. We're going to sing some songs here today. We got Miss Rebecca and Luke with us here today. And we will, and the first song we're going to sing is Deep and Wide. Right. Everybody ready? Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. And the next song we're going to sing is Jesus Loves Me. All right. All right, everybody ready? Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, literal ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. 
Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. All right, boys and girls, it is time for the Bible lesson. If you have your Bible today, we're going to open up the book of Exodus, chapter number 17. Exodus, chapter 17, and we're going to read verses 8 through 12. Exodus, chapter 17, verses 8 through 12. <clears throat> Bible says this. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. All right, in today's lesson, we are with the children of Israel. The children of Israel, they have already seen God do many wonderful things. They were in Egypt and they were slaves in there, but God delivered them from Egypt. Remember the ten plagues, how God brought the ten plagues on Egypt and freed them? Then they came out and saw another great miracle, and we saw where God parted the Red Sea and allowed them to escape the Egyptian army. Then God, again and again, he provided miracles and always took care of his children, and he gave them water from a rock in the wilderness. Not only did he give them water, but he provided them with manna and quail. And over and over again, God was providing and taking care of his children. Now, I'd like to stop here for a second and let you know that as a child of God, as someone who has been saved, you've asked Jesus to be your Savior. You are a child of God. And God will take care of you just like he takes care of the children of Israel in the Bible. But here we are in the story where the children of Israel, there's probably two to three million of them in the wilderness, they were being attacked by a country called Amalek. Can you say that with me? Amalek. These people of Amalek did not like God's people. They did not like Israel. And in fact, they started to attack them and they brought a battle to the children of Israel of Israel. Moses assigned his general. His general's name, and you might know it because you learn more about him more in scripture, his name was Joshua. Joshua at this time was a young man, and Moses chose him to be the general of the Israelite army. He says, Joshua, I want you to pull yourself together in army and choose you out some men to fight. And lead the battle against the Amal against Amalek. And so he did that. He obeyed Moses. He obeyed the man of God. And Moses went up on the top of a mountain overlooking the battle. And he took the staff that God had used in the past. And he held up his staff in the air like this. And as long as Moses' staff was up, Israel would win the battle. So Joshua and his men were fighting and warring against Amalek, and they were doing great. As long as that staff was up, the children of Israel 
did great, and they were winning the battle. But when Moses' arm started to get tired and started to drop, the children of Israel began to lose the battle. So Moses, as his arm starts to lower, I'm sure he begins to think, oh no, we're, we're losing. I better get my rod up in the air. The, the, I better get the rod of God up in the air. And when his rod went back up, the children of Israel would win the battle. But, as you could imagine, it got very heavy over time. You see, we can hold stuff up for a little bit of time. But if you try to hold something up, even just your arms, and hold them out like this, even for 20 minutes, your arms began to get very, very tired. And Moses was no exception. He was a human. He was a person, just like you and just like me. He began to get tired. And the children of Israel began to lose the fight. There was two men who saw this happening. And they wanted to help Moses. They wanted to help the man of God. And the two men, their names were Aaron and Hur. You may remember Aaron from previous lessons in Egypt, whenever they were still slaves. But they're... There was a man named Hur, that's H-U-R, not her as in her as in, that's a girl over there, her name is Sally, no, it's her as in H-U-R, and these two men went up on the hill, and they found a big stone to slide underneath of Moses, so he could sit down and take some rest, but he had to keep his rod up in the air. And they came alongside of him, one on the right side and one on the left side, and they helped Moses hold up his rod. The Bible says they held up his arms, and they helped Moses by helping hold up his arms. Moses couldn't do it on his own. He wasn't strong enough. He needed some help from some brothers in the Lord. And they came along him, they came alongside of him, and they helped hold his arms up. And the battle began to rage, and, and, and the fight kept going on and on. But because Moses had help from some friends, he was able to keep up that rod of God in the air. You see, that rod represented the power of the Lord. It represented God. And as the, as the children of Israel fought that war, and they fought that fight, they see the, that rod of God still up on that mountaintop, knowing that God was with them, and they fought. They fought with so much strength, but it wasn't their own strength. It was the strength of the Lord. And at the end of the battle, the children of Israel won, and, and God brought a great victory that day. At the end of the battle, though, God tells Moses, Moses, you need to make a memorial here and write it down. Write down how God provided. Write down how God brought the victory. How God brought two men alongside me and helped you hold up the rod. And how God gave victory over the people of Amalek. And so Moses did write this down. And in fact, this is how we know about it from Scripture right here. A few things I want to mention. Moses built an altar there that day. And he worshipped the Lord. Moses realized, and Joshua, and Aaron, and Hur, they realized that that victory did not come from the most fierce, most fierce, and most dangerous warriors. It didn't come because Moses could hold up his hands. The victory came because God brought the victory. And the Lord wanted them to know that. As they would go into the promised land here soon. And they would, they would fight and they would claim that land that God had given to them. He wanted them to know that their strength. It's not of their own, but it is of the Lord. That's the way it is with you and me. Our strength can get us nothing. In fact, we are nothing without God. But with God, we can do all things. And with God, anything 
is possible. I'm talking anything is possible with the Lord. There's nothing that God cannot do. And in our lesson here today, God wanted his people to know that the battle was won by the hand of God. And so they named this memorial or this altar Jehovah Nisai. That means the Lord, our banner. Do we know what a banner is? Hmm. A banner. Can you think of that? What's a banner? Well, a banner could mean several things. In war times, um, armies will have something marching alongside of them. Often it's a flag. It is the banner of their country. The, the flag will represent their homeland. So here in the United States of America, we have a banner. It's the American flag. Um, there's our national anthem. It's called the Star Spangled Banner. And we carry that banner with us in, into war. We have it flying here at church. We have it flying on our front porches. Why? Because we are American people. That is our banner. That stands for freedom, for liberty. It stands for all those brave men and women who have fought for our country. It stands for the land of the free and the home of the brave. That American flag is our banner as Americans. In scripture here, we see that God tells the children of Israel that he is their banner. He is their symbol. He is their flag. He is what they are fighting for and fighting with. You see, as they, as they fought that battle today, they could not have done that without the Lord's help. And when Moses named that altar, that area, he says, Jehovah Nisai, it literally meant the Lord is our banner. The Lord is what we carry with us every day. Wherever we go, we carry God with us. And if you're safe today, you're a child of God. You've asked Jesus Christ into your heart. And you believe he died for you. You believe he rose from the grave. You've asked him to forgive you of those sins that you have in your life. The Lord is your banner. And you take that with you wherever you go. The Lord is with you always. No matter where you go, the Lord is with you. See, when you become a child of God, the Spirit of God dwells in you. The Lord is with you always. The Bible says he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. The Lord, your banner, is flying with you all the live long day. Isn't that encouraging to know that God is always with you? I love that. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says this. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 tells us to be steadfast in the work of the Lord. Be steadfast in serving him and loving him and serving others and helping others. Boys and girls, we are the hands and feet of Jesus. We are what God has left on this earth to represent him. Your life should be a banner of God. When people see you, do they see the Lord in your actions and the way you talk? Do they see you and the way you walk and the things that you do? That's what the world should see when they see you and they see me. Now, are there times where we mess up and we do things we shouldn't? Absolutely. Brother Matt does it too. I make mistakes. We all make mistakes. But God wants us to fly his banner. I think about some ways we could hold up that banner of God. We could hold up that banner of God by coming to church by praying, by spreading the gospel, by being helping hands, by serving others, by serving in church. 
there, I know it's a strange time and COVID-19 has kind of changed things a little bit, but there are still ways to serve. God's got purpose and plans for everybody, for everything. In fact, there are ways for all of us to serve. Maybe it's something in the background that no one's going to see. Maybe it's something you do in secret or you do behind the scenes for the Lord. And you might not get public recognition. That's okay. Because we don't do things for the Lord because we want people to recognize us. We do them because we want people to recognize God. We want to lift up his name. We want to glorify the name of Jesus. We don't need the praise. God deserves all the praise. Today, in your life, lift up the name of God. The name of Jesus. Be proud of that name. That's the Son of God. Lift up the name of the Lord with your actions and with your life. If you're here today and you've never picked up that banner, you've never picked up Jesus Christ, you never said yes to him, you can do that today. You see, Jesus loves you. He died on the cross for you. He shed his blood for you. And he died for you. But he didn't stay dead. He rose up from the grave three days later. The Bible says, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you believe he died for you, that he rose from the grave, and you trust in him as your personal Savior, and you ask him to forgive you of your sins, he will save you. Pick up that banner today. Place your faith in him today. Is the Holy Spirit tugging on your heart? Do you feel the Lord speaking to you today? Accept that gift of salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. It's the greatest banner you will ever pick up. It's a banner that is worthy to be raised. Congratulations to our winner. Hey, as much as things are going to change, one thing's going to stay the same. We're still sending out prizes. Like we said last week, because of the holiday, it might take an extra day or two to get there, but yeah. it'll come. And I promise. If I promise to give you, yeah, and we're forgetful sometimes. But uh, this week we have an excuse. It's, it's the postal service. Uh, ask your parents. But anyway, that was last week. Brother Matt. Brother Matt. What is the question of the week? Send into our Junior Church Christmas line at 717-739-6536. Is that right? It is absolutely right. Nailed it. 2021, we don't need any cue cards. We don't need cue cards. No, That's right. thank you. The question of the week is this. What were the names of the two men who helped hold Moses' arms in the air? Bilbo is good! <laughs> what were the names? There's two of them. I don't want one of them. I want both of them. Two names. 717-739-6536. Your name will go on the big wheel, and maybe you'll win next week, and we can get a prize out to you. Well, that brings us to the very end of Junior Church number one for 2020. Does anybody got anything on their mind they want to say? Hey, uh, Brother Matt, Brother Tony, I just wanted to say this one thing. Uh, you know what this hat reminds me of? What's that? Unicorn attack! Oh! We'll see y'all next.